Hello, everybody. Let's talk a little bit about Come Follow Me this week. Our readings are 3rd Nephi, chapters 20 through 26. You'll notice I just give a little historical context and uh, a little bit of commentary on some of the content in there. Uh, there are many other websites you can go to, other YouTube videos to watch more detail, and I'm, I'm hoping you do and, and study them. Uh, Book of Mormon Central is one. A couple of uh, BYU professors share some insights. That's a great thing. So don't be afraid to use some of these resources that are out there. They'll go in much more detail. Again, I also also mentioned the Institute uh, uh, Student Manual readings are great, and I'll give you a couple of points to go study those today as well. The historical context for this one is quite simple. This is after Jesus has appeared to the Nephites in the in the Lamanites here in the in the in America after his death and resurrection. And he's at the Lound of Bountiful there at the temple and they're gathering here. Let's just take a look at a few things now. Chapter 20 verse 3. Uh, Jesus uh, conducts a sacrament uh, session. He has bread and water. Now, unlike the sacrament in 3 Nephi 18, where the disciples bring the bread and the wine, this case, Jesus provides it. So here's our own little miraculous event, and we'll see that the sacrament's going to take place multiple times. So let's go to verse 11 now, chapter 20, verse 11. It says, Yea, Ye remember that I spake unto you, and said that when the words of Isaiah should be fulfilled, behold, they are written. Ye have them before you, therefore search them. So the Lord gives a commandment, search Isaiah. Now, he will do the same thing in chapter 23. So you use chapter 20 and 23 together to study Isaiah's words. And it's all about the covenant. So uh, if you want to study the blessings of being of the house of Israel and those covenants, these are the chapters to study. Uh, verses 13 and 18 talk about the gathering. And verses tw uh, verse 12, this is chapter 20, verse 12, once Isaiah is fulfilled, then you'll know that the blessings of the house of Israel are being fulfilled, the covenants being fulfilled. Now verse 19, I really like verse 19. But this here is not Isaiah, it's Micah being quoted. In the Old Testament, that's Micah chapter 4, verse 13. And if you go to the Institute student readings for Micah chapter 4, there's some great discussion. What does it mean that the horns are iron and the hooves are brass and shall be in pieces? Many people. That's referring to the house of Israel is going to be symbolically as strong as a bull going through a wheat field. Just, it'll thrash it. That's the promise of being in the house of Israel today. We are going to be strong and mighty. And we'll conclude with that when we get there. Uh, so, let's go to verse 22. Chapter 20, verse 22. This is one of the promises. Behold, this people, he's referring to the uh, Nephites, Lamanites, that combined group there at the temple, will I establish in this land, America, unto the fulfilling of the covenant which I made with your father, Jacob. So we're talking the Abrahamic covenant here, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the house of Israel. And it, America, shall be a new Jerusalem. Is that the 10th article of faith? And the powers of heaven shall be in the midst of this people. Yea, even I will be in the midst of you. If There may be no greater blessing to the house of Israel than the Savior himself will be amongst us. I think there's a power in there, and I hope you record that in your list of blessings of being in the house of Israel. And verse 29 talks about the ordinances, the covenants. Uh, scattering, gathering of Israel. I love all of that. Let's go to chapter 21 now. Chapter 21 tells us that, that the house of Israel will be here when the Book of Mormon is coming forth. And there's some wonderful things about that. America will be a chosen land. It'll be free. And verse 6 tells us, how do we become part of the house of Israel? If I'm not, if I'm a Gentile, how do I become part of the house of Israel? Go to verse 6. If they, that's the Gentiles, will not harden their hearts, there's the first step, they may repent, come unto me, 
and be baptized. There's four steps. Don't harden your heart. Repent. Come unto him and be baptized. You'll be numbered amongst the house of Israel. Then you can get all of these blessings that we've talked about. Love that. So let's go to let's go to chapter 22 for a moment. The house of Israel in the scriptures is a temple. It's the house of the Lord. And each temple is a tent symbolically, and it's going to be held up by stakes. That we need to lengthen those cords and strengthen the stakes. When you do that, it strengthens the house of Israel or the temple. Today in the world, we have temples that dot the islands of the sea even. In fact, if you pull up a map of all of the current temples, you'll see temples dotted the South Pacific and other islands that I don't even know the names of those places, let alone now we have a temple built there. It's pretty incredible. So verse 2 says, Enlarge the place of thy tent. And let them stretch forth the curtains of the ha of thy habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, strengthen thy stakes. Every stake is assigned a temple that they're supposed to go do work in and staff and operate. Uh, and the more stakes we have, the larger and stronger they are, the stronger the temples become. It's a really a remarkable process. Chapter 23, we already mentioned that Isaiah, uh, study Isaiah. Verse 5 talks about the steps to salvation. And whosoever will hearken unto my words, and repenteth, and is baptized, the same shall be saved. So what do you do? Hearken, repent, and be baptized. These principles are just true. Now the rest of chapter 23 is interesting. The Lord says, bring me your records. You didn't write down everything that Samuel the Lamanite said. I want the words of the prophets recorded in these scriptures. And they look and they're like, yep, we didn't write down everything. So some great things that Samuel the Lamanite prophesied that uh, he wanted. Uh, the Lord is pretty particular. He wants certain things recorded. So maybe in your scriptures, in your personal scriptures, right? Uh, do you have everything recorded? Your spiritual impressions and thoughts when you watch general conference do you record not the words because you can print those out but do you record what the savior wants you to know did you hear something that was never said over the microphone those need to be recorded and actions of what we need to do and stop doing those are the recordings that we should promptings that we need to record and follow up with Love that. So chapters 24 and 25 of 3rd Nephi, that's Malachi 3 and 4 from our Old Testament. They're powerful words. Again, here I'm going to invite you, if you want to study those in detail, which you should because they're really that good, obviously the Savior's repeating them. He wants to make sure the Nephites and Lamanites have them because they don't have them. Uh, Malachi uh, they made, uh, was preaching after that Lehi left Jerusalem. So these words, he wants to make sure they have them. So go to the Old Testament Institute student readings and study Malachi 3 and 4. Some great insights for you there. Let's conclude by going to 3 Nephi 26. Verse 3. And he, this is Jesus, did expand all things, even from the beginning until the time that he should come in all his glory. I love that. Yea, even all things which should come upon the face of the earth, even until the element should melt with fervent heat, and the earth should be wrapped together as a scroll, and the heavens and the earth should pass away. Could you imagine this sermon? The Savior is explaining everything. How long did that take? Well, verse 8 tells us that only the lesser portion has been written in here. But that's all that Jesus wants. Everything else can't be written. It's, it's private. It's sacred. We can have our own experiences to find out what the Lord wants us to know. Well, how long did this take? Go to verse 13. Where, therefore, I would that ye should behold that the Lord truly did teach the people for the space of three days. This is not a one-hour discourse. We're done. This is day after day after day. The Savior is with these people and teaching them. And then it says, and after that, he did show himself unto them oft. So often, after those three days of establishing his church and training these apostles and the members, 
how to conduct a church, he shows often after that. And what else does he do? And did break bread oft, and blessed it, and gave it unto them. And it came to pass that he did teach and minister unto the children of the multitude. So this is an experience, not just one time at the temple. I hope you felt and see that the saviors are many days and even after those days he's there with them often we just may have had a wonderful experience at your most recent general conference it doesn't have to end there you can have that experience often go back to it study it review it ponder it and have those wonderful beautiful experiences with the savior it's a promise that the savior will be in our midst if we are part of the house of israel i testify that is true Next week, we will finish 3rd Nephi and cover 4th Nephi and see what's going to happen after this beautiful experience. Have a great week.